Once again, I am back to talk about another impactful anime. In case you're new here, over the past couple of years now, I have been going back and checking out anime that I have missed that are fairly respected in the community. So far, I have managed to check out Yu Yu Hakusho, Evangelion, Cowboy Bebop, Space Dandy, Death Parade, and just recently Black Lagoon. Marika Hendrix being the double Revy managed to bring an iconic performance, solidifying Black Lagoon as one of the most legendary dubs in anime history. However, I realized that a lot of my shows tend to be heavy action based, and so to spice it up, I took towards looking at the other demographics. Graphics. Unfortunately, things like Saiyan and don't have too many noteworthy adaptations, with Vinland Saga pretty lonely at the top, which led me to arrive at Shoujo. With the recent warm reception on my last video about the demographic, I once more stepped back into the ring, and after doing some research and asking around about what Shoujo I needed to check out, I arrived at Fruits Basket. One of the most popular Shoujo series in both Japan and North America, with two anime adaptations. I decided to take to the 2019 reboot, and at first glance, I thought that this was going to be a pretty bright and sunshine series. We first meet Toru Honda an orphan who lives in the woods, but even so, still has a heart of gold and positivity. Together, alongside her two best friends, Iwatani and Hanajima, they go about their daily school lives, full of slice of life and traditional Japanese youth trials. At the center of the show lies the story of the Chinese Zodiac, regarding the animal spirits within the souls of people so that the god can always be with the spirits no matter how much time has passed, enter the Somas. One day, Yuki and Shigure Soma meet Toru, and after learning of her living situation, they invite her to live with them. Of course, she learns that the Somas are the special family that contains the Zodiac spirits and that coming into contact with people of the opposite sex will make them transform. A funny dilemma that tends to interfere with school life and is exactly why Yuki might come off as a bit sus to those unaware. Of course, everyone has their favorite Zodiac given it's a childhood story and Toru's is the cat who happens to be Kyo who also happens to have the biggest beef in history with Yuki due to the original rat spirit tricking the cat. From there, I thought the plot was going to be a mix of meeting the other Zodiac spirits and a romance triangle that will pull out the heartstrings and it will be a nice slice of life story. And then you meet Akito. Looting yourself. Listen, this world is dark. You'll spend your life along a pitch black path. And cue the trauma. I won't lie, I was not expecting Fruits Basket to have a really heavy plot dealing with abuse, neglect, and all sorts of trauma, but I also think that's what people tend to overlook when it comes to shoujo. The demographic is not just all about the cute cliche romance, but can dive into real topics involving the other sides of bonds and relationships that people tend to not discuss so openly. Shigure aside, the main Zodiacs all went through forms of trauma that were caused by the antics of being a member of the Soma family as well as the curse of the Zodiac. Key pattern is that it all happened within their childhood. What children witness at a young age can impact them for years to come, and Fruits Basket displayed that perfectly. Yuki being deprived of hope and purpose and rendered a tool by his own mother. Kyo having to live with the idea that he killed his mother and his father blamed him for it. Momiji having to abandon the thought of having a mother and a sister for the sake of their happiness. Hattori erasing the memories of the woman he loved for the sake of her happiness. Ren being neglected and abused by her parents and her love for Hatsuharu resulting in violence from Akito due to jealousy. Kisa's own reclusion into silence with Hiro feeling guilty for his own inability to intervene. Shigure, well, Shigure is actually just extremely toxic and petty. I mean, the mom and Rin all under Akito's nose is kinda crazy. All of these characters at the mercy of a curse that instills feelings into their hearts that aren't even truly theirs. Stack that on top of the fact that not even the people that birthed them value all of them, and it's honestly astonishing that a lot more of them didn't succumb to depression. To love is to suffer, a quote by Woody Allen, is a perfect way to describe this show, especially for Rin and Hattori. They love their significant others so much that they were willing to suffer in silence, and Toru was willing to be in harm's way if there was a way she could help. The Zodiacs were forced to love their god as duty by the spirits, but that love and attachment brought them nothing but pain. Even Akito being loved by her father and told that it was her duty to be loved brought her pain. Her mother rejected her out of jealousy and obsession, causing her obsession with maintaining the bonds with the Zodiacs to rapidly deteriorate from all of the objectification and dehumanization. The one thing I greatly appreciated especially is also showing that not even the main character was immune to the hardships displayed across the series. Even with her heart of gold, Toru had major issues regarding attachment and abandonment. Top of that, she was an extremely selfless character. Worrying about others before worrying about yourself can be extremely destructive, and it goes back to the title drop game that she elaborated in her backstory when it came to finding that place of belonging. A lot of these characters were just outright stuck. Stuck with guilt of the past, the situations that they couldn't control and can't go back to undo, full of regrets and insecurity, and while processing her own healing, it was 
was Toru who helped them freeze their stagnation and vice versa. The one and most important gift that Toru's mom left her was the kindness that managed to reach out to everyone. See, even with the Somas being the main target of her intense desire to help, they weren't the only ones that were saved. Her best friends were saved by not only her, but even Toru's mother at the time of their interactions. Technically, Toru indirectly helped many of the side characters as well. If there is one thing you gotta give Fruits Basket credit for, it's making even the side characters and less significant characters have emotional presence. Motoko, Machi, and Manabe were characters that were greatly intertwined with Yuki, but before Yuki could even muster up the courage to understand them and their own feelings, he had to recognize his own faults and move forward, which stemmed from Toru's encouragement. Yuki's character arc came out to be extremely satisfying, as the series quickly overturned my initial assumption of a love triangle, but instead a motherly love that Yuki never had. In many ways, you could find yourself rooting for Yuki, especially with Maji, and it's because Yuki was able to learn to empathize with others away from his status as prince that people began to see the real him and not the status that people held him to. Within the student council, Yuki was able to shed away the idea of being a tool and a prince and just be Yuki Soma. Him and Machi truly deserved each other, and that episode where he broke the chalk to help keep her stable was peak fiction. I know for a fact fans were eating it up back then. Kyo's art being equally important given how much focus there was on the cat spirit. Saying he and his ancestors had it rough is an understatement. Witnessing his mother's last moments, an abusive father, a neglectful god, and then a fate of imprisonment is a lot for one kid's lifetime. I couldn't blame Kyo for trying to run away from his problems for a good chunk of the series, because how exactly do you confront all these issues when it's been going on for generations? Stories dealing with self-worth are by far delicate as they are captivating, because how they overcome their struggle of a lack thereof is what drives our investment. With every season, we saw what became of Toru's and Kyo's relationship. Season 1's acceptance, Season 2's determination, and Season 3 is when it all came together for an emotional climax that at first made me want to isekai Kyo, but then left me satisfied with how things turn out. Now, Akito by far is an anime character that I hated with every fiber of my being up until the very end. In a way, I wanted to see her deal with more consequences, but in Fruits Basket's case, the biggest consequences that they could have been dealt was losing the bonds to her zodiacs, and that's exactly what came to pass. Akito needed to be dethroned in order for her to be happy, and while it came at the expense of a life-endangering episode, Toru's willingness to not turn her away turned out to be more powerful than any of the bonds. Those bonds breaking was as satisfying as Luffy punching a celestial dragon. With the final episodes of season 3, I was really able to confidently say that I get why Fruits Basket is a noteworthy series. We get a lot of anime across the four seasons all year long, but the stories that tend to be remembered aren't the ones that always have the flashiest presentations. To be able to successfully convey such intense emotions in a story with such a large cast of charming and ugly personalities is how you end up remembered and Fruits Basket more than accomplished its goal. In the end, our Zodiacs were able to be the people they wanted to be and love who they wanted. Akito found new purpose beyond being a god, and Toru and Kyo moved forward together with their own romance in mind. Like I said before, I'm no expert on the shoujo demographic, and I don't have a bunch of shoujo under my belt, but this was a good anime, and it's no wonder that the final season is in the top 20 anime ratings. If you haven't checked out Fruits Basket, this is your sign to put it on your list for a good binge in the future. To win this off, I do have to say that with the Somas being a pretty wealthy family, it would have been pretty nice if the Zodiacs could have gotten some freaking therapy. Seriously, we have a doctor but no therapist in sight for the entirety of the show? Automatic 9 out of 10, not up for debate. That's pretty much it for me though. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to leave all your thoughts about Fruits Basket in the comments section down below. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you all in the next video.